Do you want to shoot me? And take the chance of blowing up two and a half city blocks? Because that toolbox is full. Long M Nitro, it's full. That is a video featuring a man who was in Washington, D.C., near the Capitol, alleging that he had a bomb in his vehicle that was about to go off. Now, luckily, he was taken into custody without incident. Capitol Police were able to negotiate with him for hours, and he finally was willing to be taken into custody. But prior to that, there was a lot of uncertainty about whether he actually had a bomb, whether he was gonna detonate it, what he was really planning to do. And of course, since it's 2021, he was live streaming the entire incident. Facebook has taken down his platform or his profile and they've taken down the video. But of course, people were able to grab hold of it before it was taken down. So we do have some clips of that video to share with you right now. But first, let me give you some details on who this individual is. According to US Capitol Police, the suspect 49 year old Floyd Roy, or I'm sorry, Floyd Ray Roseberry has been taken into custody safely. And we are about to show you some more snippets from the live stream that he did. Uh, scary stuff. Let's take a look at the first video. If you blow my truck up, man, hey. It's on you, Joe. I'm ready to die for calls. And brother, if you said, if you could do anything to save one life, one life. You said you'd do it. Well, you got a chance. I want to go home Sunday. I want to go home and see my wife. We're living in a free country, Joe. Choice yours. If you want to shoot me, and take the chance of blowing up two and a half city blocks. Because that toolbox is full. Long M Nitro, it's full. Roseberry alleged that he was ready and willing to die for revolution. And if you look at his political beliefs online, the types of accounts he liked, and also the fact that he was certainly antagonizing Biden throughout the video. It's it's clear that he has bought into some of the violent rhetoric that unfortunately continues to be spewed by right wing pundits and people online. And there are consequences to that. Luckily, this ended safely, but it could have ended disastrously. And I wanna note that as of now, as we are talking about the situation, it's unclear whether or not he actually had a bomb that could be detonated. Obviously, this is a developing story and we'll give you more details once we know. Okay, so let's break it down a little bit. Um, so he also kept talking about how the South is here, and he was calling out the South to uh, come and take DC. Uh, where have I seen that movie before? Uh, so the Confederacy rises again, uh, and the last time it was not about states' rights; it was about violence to keep slavery, which was about violence. So right wingers in the South have been deeply violent and honestly terroristic for. Centuries in America. Uh, oh, you can't call uh, right wingers in the South terrorists uh, historically. Absolutely. What do you think lynchings were? What do you think uh, cross burnings were? What do you think the KKK was? They were all terrorists. So now the terrorists are back and threatening to blow up uh, things in the Capitol and uh, fueled by conservative media, of course. And you know, he said, "I don't want to die today." Well, you got a curious way of showing it, isn't it? And you know they all have no logic at all, so they talk in circles. Uh, you know I don't want to die, but I'm ready to die because there's a choice to be made. Choice for what? what do, okay, do what? You blow yourself up and other human beings up, and then what happens? But it like none of it has to make sense. Of course, they, this guy is a, at a minimum a wannabe terrorist, an attempted terrorist, so he's not likely to make sense. But does he sound that much different than what you hear in conservative media everywhere? 
Oh, just the tyranny, the unbelievable, I can't believe they don't let us abuse every minority and women anymore. Uh, what a, and, and I can't spread my disease to other human beings. What kind of tyranny is this? Now I gotta respect other people's rights? No, that's it, I'm blowing everyone up. Yeah, that actually is very right wing, historically in America. That's what they do, so I'm not at all surprised. My, meanwhile, by the way, Fox News all week long, uh, fear mongering about, oh my God, Afghan refugees are gonna come in, they're so dangerous. Those are the guys who actually helped our troops and risked their lives to help America. But Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram have been telling you all week, don't let them in, don't let them in, they're dangerous. Meanwhile, it's their followers that go in and threaten to blow up buildings in DC in two city blocks. So th I mean, this is America 2021. Look, the fear mongering about refugees, it's, it's awful, don't get me wrong, I'm not minimizing it. But it seems a little quaint compared to all, all the other things they've been fear mongering about recently. About how our freedoms are being taken away, about how uh, there's tyranny in the country as a result of asking people to wear masks. Uh, the government's trying to control you by inserting microchips into your body through the vaccine. I mean, there's just, that's all you hear all day long on right wing media, all day long. The election was stolen from Donald Trump. He's a huge Trump supporter. I of mean, course, of course he is. And uh, well, we got more clips for you uh, because I think as you see more and more of the video, you get a sense that this is a person who unfortunately fully absorbed all of the lies that the right wing media perpetuates in this country. Let's listen. I guess we'll watch him die. Bomb squad's here. Joe, don't shoot. If you shoot, you're the one setting this bomb off, not me. Because I have no control. I have none. No control over. Your military expertise, the ones that was trained, one that trained the people that's in the military now. <laughs> he made this, he didn't have the two legs, but he said he knows it works. Cause he's used them many a time. Don't shoot me, Joe, cause if you shoot me, you're setting this bomb off and you're setting the other four off. And the other four might be sitting in the middle of a million people and it'd be on you. You know, throughout the video, he kept alleging that there were four other bombs, four other people in different locations throughout the United States. I mean, it's unclear if there's been any evidence of that, but he did keep mentioning it throughout his video. But I just love how he's the one who's sitting in his black truck in near the Capitol. Alleging that he's about to detonate a bomb and he's like, it's I, no responsibility here. No responsibility, doesn't wanna take any responsibility. You're the one who went there, you're the one who's live streamed. Anyway, I'm, why am I even pretending like I'm talking to this guy? It's just the unwillingness to take a good hard look at yourself and what you're doing right now. It's the same thing with the right wing all the time. Uh, never take personal responsibility. Oh No, the libs made me do it. The cop who shoots me is gonna detonate the bomb. It's not my, he says I have no control here. Well, I'm pretty sure you had control when you drove a truck full of alleged explosives to the Capitol. That seemed to be some degree of control, right? Uh, oh, but no, not me, no, not me, I, I just bring the bomb. And if they just try to save other people's lives, it's their fault, but they got my fault. Am I making fun of his accent? Goddamn right I am. If he says the South is here, okay, well, Southern right wingers, this is who you are. And so don't come crying and say, no, 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 I mean, we've just been doing violence our whole lives. And now 28% of Republicans say they're ready for violence, 40% say they have to take the law into their own hands. These are giant numbers. Don't come crying to us. For once in your goddamn lives, can you take personal responsibility for anything? And of course, a sense of entitlement. I'm allowed to drive up with a truck full of bomb. I mean, you say you have bomb in the toolbox, you got the thing in front of you, etc. But I'm allowed to do that, hashtag freedom. But you're not allowed to shoot me. You're not allowed to, uh, what, make you wear a mask or something? What, what you worried about mass? You got a truck full of bombs. What the hell are you talking about, mass? 
or any of the other stupid conspiracies that the conservative media has gotten them to believe. But by the way, it's much bigger than this. So first of all, I'm gonna get to a Republican congressman in a second that seems to have celebrated him. Okay, I got the quote on that. But earlier today, unrelated to this, was a theme that we were telling you about that that fits in here rather nicely, right? So Tucker Carlson, among others, were and Nick Fuentes and Matt Walsh and others were like basically celebrating Laura and Warburg celebrating the Taliban and how great they were in conquering Afghanistan and how they had toxic masculinity and they were real men and 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 they rode and they took hold back their country. Lauren Boebert, a member of Congress, Republican member of Congress said that the Taliban is building back better. And I wanna go to a quick tweet, Jenk, because this is also relevant. Robert O'Neill, who was part of the SEAL Team 6 that found and assassinated Osama bin Laden, he argues, quote, did you see how the Taliban rolled through the streets and took back their country? I know a few dudes who would do the same with me right now. Exactly, so that is a guy who, Went to Trump rallies. By the way, there's a funny side note there. Trump then said that the killing Bin Laden was a conspiracy, and this clown is the one who says he killed Bin Laden. He's like, wait, 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 wait. I love you, brother, but but I killed Bin Laden. That's the only reason I'm famous, and or at least I'm saying I killed Bin Laden. And why are you doing that? But still, I'll kiss your ass. I'll kiss your ass because I'm really brave. So now he's like, oh, the Taliban look really good. Maybe a couple of guys like me can co take over America and turn it into a violent theocracy, just like the Taliban did. And hey, you asked for it, Robert, and here it is. And right away, you got a guy coming in with a, a truck again filled with bombs, just like the good old days. Apparently, that's what you think, right? And now that violence is against the United States government, and you celebrate it. You're talking about how you'd like to do that with a couple of other guys in America. Now, I go to the Congressman, Mo Brooks. He's also the guy who instigated and fomented violence on January 6th. He's being sued for it. He bragged about how he knew how dangerous it was. That's why he was actually protecting himself with a bulletproof vest, right? Now he sees this attack or potential attack and he says in a statement, I understand citizenry anger directed at the dictatorial, dictatorial socialism and its threat to liberty, freedom and the very fabric of American society. Socialism. Socialism. So he sees the terrorists and thinks, "Atta boy, atta boy." He mentioned terrorists in the in that comment, and then he's like, "Well, I understand it. I mean, the American citizenry should rise up against this dictatorial socialism." He's basically saying, "I like this guy, and I want you to do more of this." He's a United States congressman, of course, from Alabama. So the South rises again. And the Confederacy is here to betray America one more time. And that was, was that his reaction to what happened in the Capitol today? Yes, that's his reaction. That's his statement on, on, the, on the terrorists today. Because when he sees a domestic terrorist, he thinks there, but for the grace of God, go I. I'm just a little bit more cowardly than he is. You know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of the Taliban. He reminds me of Muslim fundamentalists who load up young people, young you know, fighters with a suicide vest. And they go, oh no, no, I'm right behind you, I'm right behind you. You go first, you go first, you go blow yourself up, right? Quite literally here. Mo, then Mo Brooks and Donald Trump, what did they do after they escaped the crowd on January 6th? They said, oh, we're with you, we're, we're gonna march with you. And then they walked right back to their office and laughed and laughed and laughed. And now this guy comes out ready to blow up people. Mo Brooks again is like, yeah, way to go, a boy. You should be mad and you should do things like this. And then uh, where is he? Oh, no, no, you, you go with the suicide vest, not me. Fundamentalists, they're the same everywhere. We have another video to get to, so let's watch. It's time for us to take a stand, fellas, for the last generation. For the last generation that's going to have the balls to stand up for what's wrong with this government. And you know, I've done some reading. Once this head Biden's out of office, and the Democrats are all sitting down there in the jailhouse. No, no. Our president's going to be Donald Trump. And there is no limit on his pardons. He can have a pardon of 10 billion people. And there ain't a law saying he can't. I think I'm going to accept one of them pardons. 
when the time comes. He's gonna get one of those pardons when the time comes. He's specifically citing Donald Trump pardoning all sorts of criminals when he had the power to do so. And speaking of which, I wanna go to some other information that we know about this man. So as the New York Times reports, the man whom officials identified as a resident of Grover, North Carolina named Floyd Ray Roseberry. About 50 years old was making an anti-government was making anti-government statements, and that's according to law officials. And by the way, I mean we saw it in the videos that we just showed you guys. Also, um, we have a sense of the kind of content he was reading online uh, just by taking a look at his now no longer in existence Facebook page. Um, so seems to be a fan of marijuana, nothing wrong with that. But also a huge fan of Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr, Fox News. Uh, you also have um, Secure America Now uh, as part of the list of things that he liked and, and consumed on Facebook. And when you like that kind of content, when you're reading that kind of content on any platform, Remember, the algorithm keeps serving you up more and more and more of the same thing. And so he has existed in this ideological bubble where everything's a conspiracy. We're living in tyranny. Our country's being taken away from us. The election was allegedly stolen from Donald Trump day in, day out. And people get programmed into thinking that they need to do something about it, that they need to take the country back. And there are consequences to that. Again, luckily, this situation ended peacefully. We don't know the extent of explosives he had in his vehicle. So I again want to be clear about that. But there are some screenshots of some of the materials he had in his vehicle. So let's take a look at those screenshots that were provided by Emily Gorsensky on Twitter. So there's the canister that he was showing off in the stream. Then he had some sort of device that allegedly was the detonator. And here's a closer shot of the detonator. And I'm not a bomb expert, I'm not an explosives expert. So I'm not gonna purport to say that this is definitely some sort of explosive device, but that's what he was alleging. And he was threatening to harm people because he genuinely believes that this country has been stolen from people like him. We live in a country that is incredibly privileged. Okay, 1.3% of people living in poor countries right now have been fully vaccinated against coronavirus. They're desperately trying to get a hold of vaccines to keep their population safe. Meanwhile, here in the United States, we're just tossing them, we're throwing them away. They're expiring, you know, we, people won't take the vaccine. They believe all these insane conspiracy theories. It's amazing to me that people can look at this country and the freedoms that we have. We have problems, there's no question about that. But to argue that the country's been taken away from us, that we're at some sort of disadvantage, that we're living in tyranny, I just, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. Um. It's a perpetual state of entitlement, and and he feels entitled to a pardon, even though he's threatening to blow up two city blocks inside the Capitol. He's preemptively ready for that entitlement. And to be fair to him, um, Trump did push for pardons and give pardons sometimes. And in and in the case of Edward Gallagher, um, he pushed to get him acquitted uh, when he had murdered civilians. And threaten to kill his own SEAL team members. Yep. So if you're this Floyd Ray guy and you saw Trump pardon killers before, and guys who have been threatened to kill other American civilians and troops, you think, well, if I kill Americans, as long as I'm on Trump's team, he'll pardon me. And there's some chance he would. That's not an irrational thought. He done reading, okay? And that part is true. Everything else is insanity. Okay, I'm gonna end on a member comment here. I am Sock wrote in, imagine if AOC wrote what Mo Brooks did after the Republican softball shooting. Could you imagine? Or imagine if it was a Muslim terrorist and anyone from the squad said, well, I understand their anger at this you know, capitalist system and this American Western system. But you know, I guess they shouldn't do that, but I understand their anger. People would lose it, they'd immediately be thrown out of Congress. We'd lose it. We'd yeah, lose of it. course, of course we would, because it would be outrageous and wrong. 
And, and they would be immediately thrown out of Congress. Mo Brooks goes, yeah, I know, but that terrorist is a right winger. So we like right wingers who are terrorists. Everybody's like, bravo, yeah, hey, 50-50, I can't tell who's right, who's wrong. Uh, maybe maybe Republicans have a point. No, they don't. They're monsters. I got to get to one more graphic, Jane, because it's important. It's important to know what this guy genuinely believes because we see it playing out over and over again in right wing media and again, perpetuated by right wing politicians. Uh, Facebook posts uh, that he had put up. So Facebook posts include a regular array of right wing proto white nationalist talking points, including anger at transgender people for being allowed into the military. Black on black and black on white crime. Oh, he was a racist. That's so surprising. Anti masking, huh. anti democratic party sentiment. Facebook's posts now from his deleted profile from May of this year show him talking about how he's a dead man walking. This is interesting though. One of his streams, he talked about healthcare getting cut off. What do you care, dude? You're in a truck filled with bombs. What do you care about your healthcare? And get it, this is why I mentioned it earlier. Get a little of this guy like, uh, you know what? Um, wearing a mask so I don't spread a deadly disease is an infringement upon my freedom. Me blowing you up is not an infringement upon your freedom. And they genuinely believe it because that's what conservative media pipes into their head all the time. Oh, we lost in, in, in democracy. We're never gonna, we might never win another national election. Let's go to violence. That would be yeah, Second Amendment rights, Second Amendment rights. Well, now everybody remember the government's enemy, go kill them. What does Second Amendment rights mean? What does it mean? It means go kill them. It does, they don't say it in the context of defend your house or go hunting. They say against government tyranny. Every time a right winger talks about government tyranny in the Second Amendment, they are asking people like this guy to go commit acts of terrorism against government officials, military, Yes, politicians, but yes, also police. The first people blown up here would have been the cops. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.